Hey, this is Mike with the Quality Sportsman. Today, we're gonna to talk a bit about annealing, why you might wanna do it, and I'm also gonna review this brand new annealer that I just got, the AMP Mark II DB from Annealing Made Perfect. Let's go. All right, so before we get into reviewing the AMP uh, Mark II DB, which is its newest um, product offering in their annealing line, I want to just talk a little bit about why you might want to anneal, the benefits of annealing. Um, so let's go ahead and do that first. So the general theory behind annealing is that brass is uh, brass uh, is kind of a soft metal, and as it is being fired and then you know squeezed back down to resize, fired again, as that brass is heating and cooling and also being uh, you know stretched. Um, it is hardening. With the brass hardening, that can affect things like uh, the amount of times you can reload it. Um, you know, commonly when folks are done with their brass cases, it's because the necks will split up the side. And it also affects something uh, very important called neck tension. Neck tension is the amount of pressure that the case has on the bullet itself. Um, having a consistent neck tension, if you're doing precision reloading, is really important so that um, Basically, it takes the same amount of force and the same amount of pressure for that bullet to exit the casing uh, each time. And having variance in neck tension from uh, round to round can cause invariability in your, um, in, in your bullet uh, velocity, um, things like that. So if you want to see the actual numbers and tests on this, you can actually go to the AMP uh, Kneeling Made Perfect website. They've done a lot of different tests to show how uh, annealing or not annealing and different firing, firing and sizing sequences uh, will affect the hardness of the brass on the case neck and shoulder and how tough it is to actually pull that bullet out. So if you're interested in that, I uh, encourage you to go to their website. I'll link it down below and um, go ahead and read those uh, tests that they did. I think that was very informative and it helped me understand why we might be annealing. Um, this is a very expensive machine and an extra step in the reloading process. I'm never going to do something just to do it unless I understand exactly why we're doing it and the benefit that it can give me. So just to recap, uh, basically annealing restores the brass in the, in the case neck and shoulder to its original hardness or as close to it as it can get uh, to reduce the overall um, stress hardening of the neck while you're resizing and firing again. This can provide a better consistent neck tension on the bullet itself, and it can also increase the amount of times that you are able to reload those brass casings. Uh, with components getting more and more expensive every day and availability being tough, this is something that was very important to me. Uh, so that's one of the main reasons that I was looking for it. Okay, so now let's talk about how annealing works, specifically this type of annealer. There are a lot of uh, cheaper annealers on the market that use an open flame. Uh, that is one way to do it. Uh, after doing some research, I decided to go with the AMP annealer here because of a few different reasons. Um, now, again, these are claims from the AMP, uh, the Annealing Made Perfect website. So if you trust it, uh, that's great. But uh, I understand if you might be a little skeptical. So I, again, I encourage you to go, th go there and read it yourself. Um, this machine works by induction. So basically what it does is it creates a magnetic field which the brass case is inserted into. It doesn't actually even touch the brass case. And uh, through that concentrated magnetic field, it heats uh, the brass. Uh, kind of like you know some of you folks may have an induction stove in your kitchen where it takes special pans and it uses that field to, to heat the pan or the pot. Um, if you use a regular one, uh, it, it won't get the job done. Um, so that uses the same uh, theory. The good thing about that is nothing in the machine is actually getting hot, just the brass case uh, itself is getting hot. Um, and the other good thing about that is this allows uh, you to basically quickly superheat the neck and the shoulder of the case without doing the rest of the case. Um, you can say, well, why couldn't I just put these in the oven for an hour at a certain temperature? Or, uh, you know, what's wrong with the flame annealers? Well, as the longer you take to heat the case neck, the more of that heat that will be transferred down to the bottom and the base of the case, 
And uh, this is a part of the case that is not really getting worked um, over and over. And we don't want to necessarily uh, anneal that to, its, uh, to a softer or a lower level of hardness um, because you don't want that to change at all. You don't want the primer pocket to expand or things like that. So uh, annealing the neck and the shoulder is very important. Doing that without uh, affecting the head of the case is important as well. So doing it by induction, this happens within three seconds. Uh, you put it in with a little pilot. Uh, doing it by induction allows you to uh, quickly heat the neck and the shoulder, pull it out, and then you don't even have to dunk it in water or anything like that. Uh, uh, they have a graph on their website to show the process where uh, it cools fast enough that it doesn't affect the hardness of the case head. So that's some interesting things about how it works. Um, that's about as deep as I can go technically. I understand the principle of, in of induction, but I can't really explain how the magnetic fields are created or things like that. Um, so that should be enough uh, depth for this uh, episode. Okay, so the other great thing about doing this via induction is that, uh, and then we'll start getting into the features of the Mark II DB, is this allows uh, them to basically pick specific codes and specific induction levels uh, to match to your case uh, so that you can get the best annealing possible. Obviously, if you're using a flame or something else, uh, that's, it is what it is. You can only control you know, the intensity of the flame and the duration. You can't really, uh, there, there's not really too much uh, specific uh, variables that you can control there. Uh, but in this, you can actually, you know, part of the process of uh, annealing your cases with the AMP Mark II DB is finding the proper code, doing an analysis test on one sacrificial piece of brass, and then getting the best setting to anneal your brass so that you're returning it to its intended hardness. So uh, that, that's another great thing of doing this with induction, with electronics. Um, you're able to control those variables more than if you were doing it with another process. So overall, I chose to go with this, even though it was a bit expensive, I do a lot of precision reloading, uh, or I do a lot of precision shooting, which requires me to do reloading. Um, and I want to save my cases. I want to have the most consistent neck tension that I can throughout the process. So I thought this would be uh, quite an investment, but um, that would pay off in the long run. Um, anecdotally, since I've added this into my process, uh, the standard deviation of my muzzle velocity uh, for my PRS, my six millimeter Creedmoor loads, um, have gotten better, but I've also been dialing in other things in the process, so I can't specifically point to just the annealer or just the annealing um, being related to that. However, it is part of an overall process that a lot of PRS shooters, F-class shooters uh, recommend. And sometimes when champions, all the champions are doing the same thing, uh, you probably should just consider doing it. So the, that was my methodology for getting into annealing. I don't regret it. Um, it's a simple part of the process now that I have this machine and I can add it in uh, before the resizing. Um, oh, and one more great thing about induction annealing is it doesn't really matter how clean or dirty your cases are. Uh, that doesn't affect the amount of heating that the case gets. Um, so if you are a dry tumble, wet tumble, no clean your brass guy, it doesn't really matter. This will still work for you. Uh, okay, so let's get into the annealer press uh, or the, the AMP annealer uh, Mark II DB. Uh, the, I didn't have the previous version, but the previous version apparently required you to manually key in the specific code every time. Uh, the first thing that I noticed that was really nice about this was the setup was very easy, nice, easy to understand manual, uh, which I love. Um, you had to put your pilot in here, which you need to order specific to uh, the type of case that you're going to load. So it holds it in there properly. Um, and then go on their website, find basically the code that you need to put in for your brass. It will do an analysis on one sacrificial piece of brass, which... It, I don't really understand what that does, and that's kind of something that was a little confusing to me is if I was putting in the code, why do I need to do it? Um, but it did give me the feeling that, um, hey, this is learning what my brass needs. But anyways, it totally scorches that piece of brass. Uh, it is truly sacrificial. 
Uh, and then you get your specific code and you can save it in there. You can name it in this nice digital display panel. And then every time you turn that back on, you can say, okay, here's my six millimeter Creedmoor, you know, uh, case that I, uh, Lapua cases that I want to anneal. Um, you can do, you know, save in multiple different favorites in there, uh, which makes it nice and easy. Um, so that's a good feature and function uh, of this uh, that I enjoyed. Easy setup. Uh, the database functionality, the nice keypad. Um, it was really easy to figure out. I've never annealed before and I was up and running very quickly. They also, uh, <laughs> one thing I learned during the annealing process, which I know that we know this, I was unaware of how hot the brass cases get. So I did burn myself a few times, you know, even though they give you this nice brass case holder, uh, you basically need to have a metal pan. I did verify it will melt plastic. Um, I did that as a test just to see. Uh, so you need a metal pan and you have to use this brass uh, sh uh, shell holder basically and put the uh, shell in there and then you click, uh, or you, it has an automatic detect feature. So as soon as the case is in there, um, it will anneal it and then you can pull it out, pick up the next one. Um, so the annealing function takes about three seconds each per case. So a few seconds on either side to get it in and put a new one in there. Um, I was able to do a, a couple hundred cases in a reasonable amount of time, um, definitely less than an hour. So uh, that's not too much of an impact on my overall reloading process. Uh, they do have an amp mate, which is this funny little machine, which will put them in and take them out for you. But I'm not really ready to get into that. This is uh, only going to add an hour every you know month or so to my overall amount of work that I spend in the shed here. So um, I'm just sticking with the base units. So overall, I thought this was very easy to set up. It's a very high quality piece. Like it, it feels quality, it feels well-made. Um, it is simple to use. Uh, I didn't really take much time investigating how to actually use the machine. The directions were very easy and um, I was up and running right away. And the annealing process itself with the auto detect feature um, putting the case in, understand, like, you don't have to hit a button. It just knows it's in there and it just goes. Um, that was pretty awesome. That speeds up the whole overall process if you're doing it manually. So um, I, I don't really have much else to say about this. I've only used it for one full batch of annealing, which was about 300 cases of Lapua 6mm Creedmoor. I'm going to be doing this again. I shot a PRS match a few weeks ago, and now I need to go redo all my brass pep prep. Um, so far, I really like this machine. I do understand it's a little bit expensive um, on the expensive side. I won't comment on the price here as that's always variable and I, I don't want folks to watch this and then it, you know, the price is raised later. Um, but this is pretty high quality and initially I would recommend it, especially if you are annealing. However, I understand that uh, because this is so expensive, that might be a deal breaker for some folks. Um, I don't, and you know, this video is not to disparage flame annealing or just folks that say I'm not going to anneal. Um, I understand, I bet we could shoot side by side and you still may outshoot me. So I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not throwing stones at the uh, non-annealers or the flame annealers. Um, this is definitely a luxury item. However, if you can't afford it, so far my initial impressions are that this is a really high quality piece of machinery and it adds um, value to the reloading process and helping to build that consistency. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll put out another like maybe 5,000 round update once I got some time on this machine. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I will uh, email and chat with the AMP guys uh, to get those questions answered. Um, and thanks for tuning in this time. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. Uh, I got more videos coming out on reloading, shooting, and things like that. Um, so thanks for tuning in today and we'll catch you next time on the Quality Sportsman.